ahead and call the meeting to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes from the last meeting? Yes, I have a question under the, down under the um, Brian and Allison Wisney email, the very, very last vote we took, um, the way that it's worded. The first one said, to pursue for the full amount and if recovered will be split proportionately between city and borough of manufacturing. And then it looks like there was an amendment of full amount to pursue. But then it says anything recovered would be split between the city of Hillsborough and borough manufacturing. Um, I don't know if we wanted that actually amounted to what the amounts were because it's not split in you know it's to pay back borough manufacturing what they paid in but i think it was meant to split equally like if we got a thousand dollars they'd get proportionally back what they so if we so, got a, if we got a thousand dollars back they would yep, get that would pay them back that 500 and 500 but up to what point to what they paid okay so it doesn't need to specify that or anything is my question I don't think we, it's up to you guys, but I guess I thought that was the understanding of it, would be only be paid what they paid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, up to what they paid, yeah. So, yes. so whether you want that added in for clarification, I think that was the intent of the motion. Correct. Yeah, I think the intent was there just in case there's I just don't know who would ask that, but. Do you think we need to have it clarified anymore, JR? You could on that last one, maybe just put paid back equally until our manufacturers are reimbursed in full or something like that, just yeah. so okay. it's within the minutes clear. Sure. Yep. Okay, we'll get that in there. Is there any other changes? For addition? If not, do I have a motion then to admit to approve with those amendments? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Dave, seconded by Nicole. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Presentation of the bill. Questions or additions? Do I have a motion to approve? Is the ArcGIS just an annual subscription? It was when we had it in Harwood. I would assume so. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've never, I've never seen it before. So. Maybe it was built in with something else. You didn't look at that specific line. I don't know. I've never seen it before. Motion to approve. I'll make the motion. Jason makes the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Paul. Any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Everybody's okay with it. We'll skip to five and do the tax equalization meeting right now. Okay. So we'll open up the tax equalization meeting at 635.
you got to be in the mic, though. Oh, man. All right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, so Hillsborough ended around 92% on our sales ratio this year, which was really good. So the only adjustments made this year for were any exemptions ending, remodeling, or new construction. Uh, we had two new home exemptions that will be in effect for 2024 and 2025. The last five Jordal townhouses start their pilot this year, um, and that'll go for five years, so the values on those came off this year. Uh, we had one new commercial improvement exemption start this year at the Fort Levette Clinic. Um, two residential improvement exemptions came off this year. Um, there are still three in effect. One will end after 24, and two more will end after 25. Um, currently have four REN zone exemptions in place. One will end after 2024, and then three others will end after 2025. Um, I have some exemptions to have approved. We got Russell Hansen, Mel, and Judy Erdman. Um, one for, two I guess, for Stanford, uh, the Trail Historical Society, and then the Senior Center. Uh, we, oh, and the Learning Circle. We have a few others that we did not receive yet, so if we do get them in, and I think no reminders have been sent out, we can get those approved at the county level instead. So what do the exemptions mean? Like, um, So there are, so like the learning circle, since it's a daycare, um, the building itself can be exempt, but the land isn't. Um, and then we also have uh, like wheelchair exemptions, so if you're permanently in a wheelchair or legally blind, um, it's just a flat 100000 taken off the value of your house. Okay. Um, so we have the exemption. Do I have a motion to approve the exemptions that we do have? Make the motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second it. Moved by Nicole, seconded by Dave to approve the exemptions that are submitted. Any other discussion? Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jason? Yes. And a yes for me. Motion carries. That's all you have? That's all I have, so unless there's some questions. <laughs> okay. Um, otherwise, yeah, I just need a motion to approve as presented. And I should ask, is there anybody in the audience that would like to talk on property or tax equalization? Uh, I received a letter, that, which is why I'm here. Okay. Um, if you want to come up to the mic. Sure. Sure. I, I didn't know it was like this. I just thought I'll talk to the one person. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, I, I just purchased a home here in Hillsborough. Could you give us your name? And how uh, sure. My name is Michael Soba. I live in uh, 502 Fortune Street Southeast, the old Journey's place, I believe. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I, bought a home, I bought the house in October, and I got this letter on the mail saying that the taxes were going to go up by 21% because the, uh, there was a finished basement that was previously left off, and I disagree with that. I don't believe my basement is finished. I believe it's like 30 grand away from being finished. So that was the only thing I had. What was the value, since you just bought your home, was the value of your home close to what the county had? Uh, appraised that at? Oh, I mean, sure. I mean, I think my house is worth more than what you guys appraised it, but if the reason that it's going up is because of the finished basement. I mean, but that's one reason. But if your value, if your value changed, ultimately it's going to go to whatever's close to what the sale price was. So, for sure. Well, I mean, I, I mean, that, that's totally fine. I just felt that it would have been like a different reason. Let's well, see, we went, oh, sorry, I don't want to interrupt, but no, I went to door to door last year, and on that particular house, they weren't living in there at the time, so it was For sitting sure. empty. So I wasn't able to get in and see, you know, was there any finishing in the basement. So when it sold and we found out that there was, that was why it changed. Okay. I just, I just think a finished basement is like a place that you can actually live in. It might not be finished per, you know, what somebody might build today. I think that For house sure. was probably still in its original 19 late 1970s condition probably. Mm -hmm. So it's still got finishing, but it's not bare concrete. For sure. Okay. Well, that's, that's all I had. <laughs> it said appeal, so I was like, I'm gonna come appeal. Okay. All right, so that's, that's it. That's pretty much all you can do. Well, I mean, you can ask us to try to change the value of it, but ultimately if, 
at least this is my opinion, if your value that you have, that you were given, is close to your sale value, there's really nothing that I see that we could change. Okay. Sounds good. I don't know how anybody else feels, but that would be... <clears throat> All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Thanks for coming Thanks in. Thanks for coming out. Yep. So I have a motion then to approve the tax equalization submitted by Michelle. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? A second. Probably moved and seconded by Jason and Paul. Any other discussion? Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Jason? Yes. Dave? Yes. And a yes for me. Motion carries. Thank All you. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Tax equalization meeting is now closed at 641. We'll move on to the presentation of the March financials and quarterly financial review. Yep. Um, so, as promised, um, I went through the uh, expenses and revenues for the quarter and gave you guys just a short breakdown. Um, I wanted to give you something easy just to let you know where my areas of concern are for this year's financials um, and just to kind of highlight some of the things that I think will need to be um, will need to be looked at. Um, I kind of gave out my last copy so can I borrow somebody's? Thank you. Um, the front page, you can keep yours, okay. JR. The front page is a uh, just a spreadsheet of your guys' funds, um, what you budgeted, what you've actually spent, or what you've actually brought in, and the percentages that correlate with it. Um, for the most part, I'm not too worried right now. It's early in the year. Um, where I went into detail is... Um, in the word document portion of the report. Um, I, there's going to be a decent amount of line items in the general fund that will probably be overspent on. Um, so we're just going to have to watch on those. Um, and it's, it's um, mainly due to uh, salaries and benefits. Um, and that, that wasn't something that you could help at the time that you had new hiring happen. So... Um, the other ones that I, anything in yellow uh, highlighted is what I had some small concerns on or I wanted you guys just to be aware of it right now. Um, streets, streets is always a touchy one. Um, you only get so many dollars per year and right now it looks great. Um, the guys have just spent over half of their um, allotment in gravel and sand. Um, that's really not a surprise, though, for as icy as it was this year. Um, legacy earnings, there's no concern there, but um, it'd be nice to get an ear tag for those dollars uh, so you guys can get those spent within the time frame. Um, the armory, no real concerns, just wondering on the uh, how to get revenue um, from the renters over there. Mayville State rents the building. Um, and I looked last year, it looks like you guys typically get a good size check in January um, and then maybe a smaller one um, like in June or July. Um, and I just wasn't sure what the process was for that. Um, so just touch base on that. Um, municipal infrastructure fund, again, just like the legacy earnings, um, just want to get those dollars ear tagged so we know what we're going to be spending them on. Um, you guys have a fund out there for the USDA water and sewer main project. Um, I just need a little bit of assistance on that one. Just make sure that we're good to go on that. Um, Riverbend, you don't, uh, 525, you don't have any dollars in or out of that fund. It's completely zeroed out. And I didn't know if we needed to keep that open still. Um, I figured if we don't need to, then we can just That one get should it. be able to close. Should be able to close that one? Yeah. Okay. Um, the Kingman sewer expansion, um, this is going to need to have some addressing. Um, right now, the commission is spending over 59000 uh, for the banknote or for the bond, um, but you're only bringing in seventeen grand from uh, HEDC. Um, 
so that the, the numbers just don't add up there. So I, it's something that we're going to have to discuss. Um, for the water plant, or excuse me, for the water well, fund. Well, touch base on that one just so everybody is aware of it. If you are not aware, some of us do know, and some of us maybe just need to be reminded about what it was. Kimberly Sewer is the sewer project that was done over on when Dagelman's and Tolay was put in. There was a sewer line that was put over. The way that it was sold was that those that were going to use it could buy into it and pay their specials off. Those that didn't could hold off until the end of the bond. So yes, we have been paying all of it. HEDC was putting in 20%, I think it was, or somewhere around in there. So ultimately, which will be a hard day when this bond is up, we have several that we have to go after to pay those bonds off. Is so, there a date on when that bond is up? I believe it is 20, 28, but let me double check. Okay. okay. So it comes up in a couple of years. And, and I'm assuming all of them agreed to pay at the end? Uh, yeah, 2028. There is some confusion as what it's supposed to be. Oh. It's pretty black and white from our seeing of it and what we're understanding, but um, some of those individuals that own that property now don't feel like they should have to pay. They thought it was sold to them based on they didn't have to pay unless they did something with it. Um, so that project, just so you're aware of how much it was. The bond amount was $887,896.25. HDC contributed about 180,000, and the city also would kick in if they paid ahead of time. So if they paid up front, the city, the deal was is that the city would pay 20% or give them a 20% discount. Plus, you wouldn't have to pay tax or uh, interest on any of that. So that's what the city was in for, uh, and so currently. The only ones that have paid off out there are Egg Country, Total Egg, Dagelman's. The rest have not. Um, and then when Riverwalk came in, we were able to negotiate and bring in the rest down because they were charged a hookup fee as well. And so their specials went down in percentage. But the ones that are left are Anchor Ingredients, Birch LLC, Total Egg Addition wasn't paid because there was some land added later on, um, the Vedeker family land were the ones that still owe. This was as of last year, the city has contributed about 257000 and that'll keep going up until this is paid off. But we should see most of that back in 2028, where it'd be 2029 by the time. So unfortunately we have to keep paying, I think the money used to come out of sales tax to bring it back up. And normally we were able to just kind of let it float as is because we only put in what we needed to make sure that it was zeroed. And if there was a payment, then you didn't have to pay out of it. So hopefully that makes sense for everybody. So ultimately once it's done, we'll end up putting that money back again to refill up sales tax hopefully. Sales tax or wherever you, we feel best to put it. So. Does that help? Is this spending, is it pretty consistent for, um, is the amount pretty much consistently the same every year? Like, or does it change? No, it's pretty much the same. Pretty consistent. Okay, okay um, moving on, uh, water fund. Um, 
Uh, we did end up adding in a second department underwater fund uh, labeled water treatment plant um, due to some of the reporting that's been requested from AE2S and rural water. Um, it was easier to have water treatment plan have its own separate department, then we can track specifically expenses um, just pertaining to that portion of the water fund. Um, I do think that the revenues seem a little low for water, um, so we may have to address uh, may have to address that after your quarter two checkup. Um, have we received? Central. Have, well, not true up. Have we received payments from East Central? I'll have to look. I don't think because so. that will be a big portion of it because. Okay. 40% or 60% of our water production goes to Salty Central. I will make a note to look on that. 601 East Central. Okay. Um, I did put um, group insurance out of there. Blue Cross Blue Shield didn't seem to be included in the insurance costs. And so we created a separate line item for Blue Cross Blue Shield as well. Um, and then the only other a uh, small flag was that the chemical line item um, has already spent over 45% of their budget for for this year out of that. Um, so just letting you guys know that. Um, Is that because it costs a chemical? Or it, is there something else? It could be. I haven't investigated as to why. Um, Sometimes I think they just buy in bulk, and, in bulk and then, mm -hmm. but we should check. Yep, yep, yep. Um, sewer, no concerns. Uh, garbage, no concerns. It's slowly coming out of the red. It looks better and better every month, so that's nice to see. Um, electric fund, no concerns as of yet. We'll continue, continue to monitor. Um, all the other funds, 605, or meter deposit, mosquito, airport, rec department, no concerns out of those. Um, out of the park, there is a fund set up for park district, but I noticed in your guys's general fund that you pay dollars out of your general fund because of your state aid allocation. You guys give dollars to the park district, um, so I'm wondering if that fund is uh, is necessary to have on anymore. If you guys want to keep it, or if we should well, slim was, it down. What was supposed to happen in there was we loaned the park district some money for their new lights. And so that was a way to keep track of how much they paid off. So if it's paid off, then I assume it could be closed. But if it isn't, then... I'll double check that. Um, they did just send a check, or they submitted a check after their last park board meeting for 30-some thousand. So maybe they did. But that was what it was intended. Yep. Yes. Yep. That was the intention of it, was to, so to keep, track of, that. To keep okay. track of that. Okay. Um, other than that, you know, this is your guys' first quarterly report. Um, is there anything further that you would like, or do you want to just do, like, a light touch base like this going forward? If there are things that you'd like to know, you know, please let me know. I'm, I'm happy to build it in. I just didn't want it to be a duplicate of the info that I already give you guys. So, um, any questions, concerns, feedback? No, it's, 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 it's really well... Well done report. I really like it. So the only question I had is 202. 202, Legacy Highway Earnings? Because we didn't have that before. That came in the end of this last year. Um, that was a state disbursement. Um, I just figured you guys knew it would be coming, I guess. So, yeah, so it's just like it says, it's, it's meant for street projects. So, so it's a new... New fund? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep, and I, I made it a new fund just to keep it separate from everything else so it didn't get... Okay. When did that start? You guys received that either in October or November. It was about the same time that I started. So it's not it's not the same as the prairie dog? It is separate. It is separate. Mm-hmm. Okay. And there's you 20... that's a one-time thing, or...? To my knowledge, it is. Huh. Okay. Anything else on that? Does everybody have a chance to look at the Inkling utility bills and accounts? And we'll talk about that as well. Because I know Casey needs to do that other time. So, any 
anybody that is on this list is 30 days, correct? Past due? Yes. The, what I was trying to get straight was how you said it was 15 days or partial, so if they, I guess I didn't completely understand that, so. So, are you talking about the contracts, right? Yep. So it's the contracts, not necessarily the the late, okay. Correct. Yep. Anybody on this list currently, um, I'd have to double check, but everybody on this list is within your guys' ordinance that states you can't be more than 30 days delinquent on your utility bill. Um, you know, this list will go down pretty quick. Sarah sent letters out about it. Um, last time it was about the same length, and we only had to do five shutouts last month. Okay. Um, it's the it's the contracts that we do feel take quite a bit of effort. Um, right now we've got five uh, five contracts, so not a whole lot. It's pretty minimal, um, but it is a lot of you know, a, a lot of payments don't come in on the dates that are requested. All of these contracts we set up because they either A, had contracts prior and didn't follow them, um, or B, they were, you know, kind of struggling and this was prior to this, you know, this time frame. Um, so for those who had a contract and did not follow their original contract, we made a new one stating that they can hold off on their delinquent amount, um, that that would be split up into the six months that was allowed by commission. And those payments for the delinquent amount is due on the first of each month. And then they have to follow that up with their current bill on the 10th of each month, which is due on, or which is stated on the postcards. Um, quite a few times though, um, Abby and Sarah will get phone calls uh, requesting extensions on both dates um, and it's it's just a lot to keep track of and it, we don't want to get in the same situation that we just dealt with at the last meeting. We just would rather have people follow the 30 day ordinance and so we'll get forward. rid of the contracts. I, I would I, I think it would be a nice idea to be done with contracts after these five are done. That's, that's what we Because the intent was so that they could be helped. Let's say they got behind, they needed a little because of something. But then if they didn't follow the contract, the elect it says in the contract that their electricity would be shut off immediately. So mm -hmm. if we are going to have the contracts, we have to make sure that if they don't pay them on time, that you guys are sh telling the guys to shut them off. Mm -hmm. No extension, no nothing. Yep. That's what in contract. No second contract. No nothing. No, it is. This is a. This is their last. Because it was meant <laughs> to be a favor and help them if they were struggling. If Jason oh, ended up time. having cancer and had to quit working and didn't have chance, then he could come in and say, "Hey, this was the issue. Mm -hmm. This was meant to help Jason out so that he could get through it and what he could afford and do, not like keep them going along and along and along." It wasn't to just. You know, they they delinquent on one, then another one. It was to help the people that were in hardship, mm -hmm. but then paid both payments when they were supposed to. Mm -hmm. yep. And, and if they, they did that, they were okay. And if they ever failed on the contract, then they had if they missed any payment, then to get their power back on, they had to pay the full amount, what was current due plus what was past due. Mm -hmm. Yep, and that's still stated in all of their all of the new contracts too. It's, I think it's been difficult because they have been given, you know, the slight extension once, so they'll ask for it again. So that's that's where it's been difficult. Um, yeah, we'll, we're happy to do either way um, as long as you guys tell us what to enforce. Because so. prior, what, and this is what I see and I don't like. So number 16 came in and they have a $149 bill, but they only paid 100 of it. Mm -hmm. Well, that was the meant, that was the point of the contract was so you guys weren't keeping track of this. Either you paid it all, or you were on a contract. Even if it was a two month contract or whatever, it was so that it was in writing, so that 
I think this got into a slippery slope where mm-hmm. we're only this got paid off a little bit here and then we ended up getting and pretty soon this snowballed this maybe number two that the 50 turned into 550 the next time or, or a couple times down the road because we kept letting them just pay a little bit while well, they never paid the late they just kept current mm-hmm. yep yeah I can double check on this list um but yeah, from what I understand, most of these are just the 30 days. It's just the five that we have on contract that right. you know we've been struggling with. So. so, for example, if number 12 didn't pay their, couldn't pay it, they not come in and pay $200 of it, it should be, okay, if you're not going to pay it all, you can go on a contract. When are you going to pay it off by? And if they, at any point, don't follow that contract then the power goes off or the utilities go off okay they don't get a second contract and they don't get a second chance okay because we didn't want this is what i didn't personally when i started is i didn't like seeing this where you know because then it puts our you guys in a hard point yes yep so that was the point of getting away from this going just to the contract it's written nobody can say well you said no it's in the contract. So if these five, they were all under contract and they signed a new contract, we let them do a new one? Yes. Yeah, so I, I, my thought is they get that one chance, and if they don't do that, and, and if they, I think, too, if it gets to the point where they come in and they pay it off, and then in three months we're in the same boat, we should maybe look at even limiting how frequent they can try to do that. Too. Right. Mm-hmm. But, and I think we even said, JR, do you remember if they needed another extension or if it was longer than X amount of time, they had to come before the commission to, to be able to get the contract to. So if it's something over and above what you guys feel comfortable with, you can say, well, you need to come to the next city commission meeting too. Okay. Is that? Because there's a difference to me, there's a difference between somebody having a hardship and somebody just chronically not paying. There's a difference there. Because mm-hmm. what we had seen before, at least I had seen, was a lot of they're the same ones, and they still had that back amount that they could never get me off. Yep. So, um, so is that clear? Does that sound good for everybody? Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Then I just need a motion to approve the disconnects. Make the motion. Dave makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Jason. Any other discussion? Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jason? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion here. Commissioner's reports will start with Dave tonight. I have nothing tonight. Jason? Can I start here? Go next? Yep. Um, if we could, I also was. I did meet with uh, the, the daycare over at the Armory this afternoon, and I did get a couple of quotes, and I also do have her here to talk about some stuff that we talked about as well, and just make sure that I don't screw it up too bad. Um, I'll start with the smaller stuff first. The first one is I did get a bid for the replacing the three pieces of fascia on the north side there. Um, that bid is $950 from DBM Contracting. You guys want to see it and then a second one was one of the classrooms when they redid the windows back in the day they didn't get them sealed properly and it's causing um, water to get in and cause potentially additional damage um, to replace the other window just that they're currently using that one's a thousand dollars from the same company to replace from what I was explained, um, there were some doors that were also ordered for the building back in Mike's day, and with COVID and stuff, it was they were told that they are in back order, back order, back order, and they haven't come in in several years. So, um, to me, that would be another thing that I don't know if we need to figure out what happened there or what happened to that money that we had set aside. It was obviously before my time, so any guidance you guys can help with that I would appreciate. Well that that north or that's kinda of rocky doesn't it? Put your hand through the door. Yeah, I, I don't know that we have did we approve doors? 
We talked about doors at one time, but I, I think can't. we were supposed to get quotes and I don't remember. Yeah. No, the doors were ordered. They were yeah, from the lumber yard. And many times I talked to Adam and said, "What's up with the doors?" And he said, "Yep, they're back ordered. They're back ordered." Okay. And then we got to the point where we didn't think the doors were ever coming again because it's been almost three years since that happened. I guess I just didn't even. It's been a while. <laughs> and that's yeah. kind of what I gathered. It, it was just something that was brought up in conversation today that we should get them. We so should then get should them get them new quotes. With, I'm sorry. But then we should get new quotes to see. So, all right, we can do that. Um, two things that they brought up, and feel free to stand up and correct me if I mess this up at all. But um, the daycare has received, applied for a grant and received a grant. Um, that would allow them to redo the kitchen area. Um, they're required by new, the new regulations. They need a, a three-bin sink in order to be in compliance to even use the kitchen. Uh, what they're proposing is, with our approval, they would, um, they would be willing, depending on what the bids come in at, be able to foot the majority, if not all the, the whole bill, to redo the kitchen off of their grant. Um, so that's something that I think would be something we should. And they kind of said, you know, they plan on being here a long time, so they want to partake in that building. So I think that would be something good for us to also better the the quality of the kitchen right now. Uh, apparently, there's been other places that have used the um, armory as well for events, and um, due to it not meeting standards, couldn't use the kitchen. So. That was one option that they had was they had grant money that they had received that they would be willing to take care of that. And the second one is they also received grant money that would cover up to, rough, I believe, about $200,000 to replace the playground and redo it, make it accessible so that any special needs person at any level would be able to access and use that playground safely. So just... A, it's a couple of items that they received grants for that they were interested if we would be on board with them doing it since it is our building. Well, I don't have any issues with that. A kitchen is, needs update anyway. Yeah. Playground, yeah. Good grant money. That's why... I told him, I said, in my opinion, I, I think it would make a lot of sense if we're able to get money and they're able to get the money to redo that stuff. That saves us from having to look at it potentially down the road. I think the the two bids, being that it's going to be hard to find a contractor, if he, that contractor is willing to do it, we could approve those and then if you, the rest just come back with what it would cost us. And that's what they're looking I'm sorry, and that's what they're looking for tonight is for us to give them the go ahead to look for yeah, this. At this point the remodel is we're partaking that we would pay for the entire remodel. We just need your approval to be able to go ahead with communication with Jason as to what the plan was to do it because we're looking at like removing the entire kitchen, redoing the floors, gotcha. bringing in all stainless steel, um, and then a, either a three, we're looking at maybe a corner, adding two more sinks, or just doing a whole new one part. So then there'd be plumbing, we'd have to move one of the fridges, so there'd be electrical. But we're hoping that with the grant funds we were working with, <coughs> we would be able to pay for the entire remodel. Once we got bids, we told Jason we'd come back if it ended up being over what we had, then possibly talking to you guys about maybe helping a little bit. But the plan right now is for us to pay for the entire remodel. Okay. My assumption is the kitchen was inspected, right? So it'll be inspected again after the remodel as well. We had our health inspection in like February-ish, and they said the state is no longer allowing us to be grandfathered into right. not having them, so they gave us six six or eight months to become compliant with it. Okay. So, yeah, when we're due for our next inspection, they usually inspect twice a year. They'll come back. We'll, by August, we'll get another inspection, and he'll be looking for completion, and we're looking at the third week of August, I think, is when we were looking 
because we're shut down for half that week, so they'd have almost a week to get in there and do it. Sure. Okay. The sad part about it is there's no room to make it bigger. That's, we'll lose know. counter space, but that's where we were looking at maybe doing the, because we already have the two sinks here, so that's fine. We just, we have to add one more sink on to make it like the commercial style if you didn't have the dishwasher, and then we need a, a separate hand washing sink. So whether we put in two more sinks or we add on to the one sink and then put a hand washing sink on the outer corner, like, but we will lose some counter space because the fridge will have to be moved. Yeah, I just wish there was a way we could make that kitchen, doing all that work to make that kitchen a little bigger because it is, you know, just a... Well, we could go upward. Well, you know, we could <laughs> take all that all and move upward, but then we would definitely be flexible. Well, you lose that, that lobby area probably. So. Or into the lobby. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we could go either direction, but then we're talking about tearing a major wall down. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be the only thing. But yes, that could be an option. Okay, do I have a, there's no other question to have a motion. First to approve the two bids. Make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Paul, second by Dave, to approve the two bids for the window and the flashing. Is there any other discussion? Paul? Yes. Jason? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. And then approval, second would be a motion to approve for the Maple State to do the playground and kitchen. And if the grant funds exceed, to then come back to us. I'll make the motion. Dave makes the motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Nicole. Any other discussion? Nicole? Yes. Jason? Yes. Dave? Yes. Paul? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Anything we else? just have a couple little things yet on the armory. Um, I think, if I recall correctly, we're working still on getting cleaning bids, but one thing that um, was brought up was as far as get events and after events, I know we do a deposit. Who's responsible for the cleaning after any time somebody else uses that gym, whether it's an event or any other type of situation? I think it's Paul. Oh. There you go. <laughs> okay. Paul. Oh, you fill the <laughs> And like getting ready for events, stuff like that. Because they've been getting contacted saying there's not soap and stuff like that. Items like that. So we'll just have to try to do a better job about that. Like? Making sure when there is events that we are having all the stuff that they're going to need. And I couldn't remember the answer, that's what I was asking. And maybe we just need, when they, when they sign up for to rent the army, what facilities do they actually need? Do they need the kitchen? Do they need all those things? So it's asked ahead of time. And then just the very last thing I think, unless she has something to add that I missed, um, on the armory is they said that the vacuum that's currently there is not picking anything up. So they were wondering if we had any type of vacuum that could be provided as far as um, helping them keep the floors and stuff clean. And the rugs, stuff like that. I guess we'd have to purchase one, so. We'll have to look into that. It, it's for the public use. Like, we have our own vacuum, but we only have just a little shark for, um, like, our classrooms. But it's, like, the rugs. Like, when everybody, like, softball team comes in and they drink all the mud in, well, then they try to vacuum the rugs, but the vacuum doesn't work, so the mud doesn't get picked up. No. And our vacuum is too little for that big kind of mud. So if you want to look into that. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. And then... Uh, the cemetery, I reached, or actually they reached out to me again since we got into winter. Um, there's those couple of trees that are by that one grave site yet. I was just looking for advice if we should just talk to a tree company and get 
them out or if our city, I don't know if our city guys have access to a chainsaw or we do to... How big are they? Uh, let's see. Let me get my email. The crew does have chainsaws. And then we could just maybe have somebody come in and do the stumps. I'd say they're probably, I mean, they're not super big around, maybe a foot or so, but they're pine trees and they go up on some type of pine and they probably go 15, 20 feet into the air. You could talk to the guys down at the shop and see what, because they could, you know, they got that backhoe with that grapple on it, they could pick it up, set it in the truck. I right, will do but that. I would check with them guys first. Yep, that's perfect. And then... It's on there. Um, as far as sheriff's office, the cameras are in all of the cars that we are currently using. So the body cams and camera systems up and going. So that's kind of why I have a list as I was able to get to some of the other stuff and address it. Um, and then the, the last thing on the sheriff's office is been getting a lot of complaints on the dogs running around and stuff like that and the issue is is probably about oh, over a year ago circle of friends that we have the contract with quit taking any dogs from outside the area and then now they shut down talk is that they're possibly opening back up but right now we have nowhere to take any dogs so um, talking with Steve, he was going to try to reach out to Circle of Friends and see if that's even something they would entertain again. Uh, question there is what, if, if us as a city have any ideas or how much are we willing to spend to host dogs if we have to try to search and find another kennel somewhere that's going to take them. People don't own these dogs? They do, but like the other night, 2 o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden there's a dog and nobody knows who they are. Maybe we got to get a little bit tougher on registration so people so we know whose dogs these are. We yeah, have it finds. And I, I'm, yeah, I, and yep, we definitely have the finding options and stuff like that, but when you get a dog like that night, until you figure it out even, a dog gets found at two o'clock in the morning that nobody can figure out where it goes. We don't have the right we don't have the deputies to sit and babysit a dog all night and um, again, like I said before, we've been very fortunate that um, Journey Homes has helped quite a bit, but we don't have after our contacts for them, and I really don't want to bother people that are volunteering their efforts to help the dogs when they have full-time jobs at 2 o'clock in the morning. So just kind of looking what the city's think, thoughts are. As just far as for why, what, what happens, or what do, they, what do they do when you get a dog and you don't know who it is? It's sent to, it was sent there. We, if we weren't able to figure it out, then, then the owner, either if it, was, if it wasn't owned, the city would end up getting a bill, and if it was owned, the owner, when they picked it up, would have to, I believe, would have to pay the, the cost for the boarding. Would it help to have a temporary here in the city that would have, that you guys can at least place the dogs and, you know, if we had some kennels? Either in here or in your guys' building, if we were able to purchase. They used to have a kennel down behind the city shop. We used to, and it got taken out. City shop. I know. I know the sheriff's department has no interest in getting into babysitting dogs. Um, if the city personnel or people from the city would um, be able to or want to do that, I know I have worked in areas where the city has taken care of it themselves, and they're. It was next to their city shop, and their city employees would go give them, make sure they have water and food and all that stuff. But then you're ask, then we're asking our city employees to do even. I'm just saying, if you had a spot, not like long term, right? If you got them at two o'clock in the morning, you can go put them in the kennel, and then it's, in the, it's when the daylight hours, you'd have time to to deal with them. It's definitely something I can bring up. That's it's something said. out on the social media, you know. The, Take a picture of them, and or if you put them in the cage, or we have family, or we have people in the community. Maybe we ask the community who would want to be a foster dog parent for a, a little while to take care of them. I'm curious what do other towns do. 
right. it can't be just an issue here. The bigger, no, some of them just don't touch it at all. The long, they just is what it is. But you know, you have you have Grand Forks. Grand Forks has the Humane Society and stuff. They have contracts with. Or I'm sorry, Grand Forks, Fargo, the same thing. They all have these contracts, and that's we were set up with the same thing. And then Circle of Friends shut down, and even before that. You know, they, they quit. I I can think of two or three times that I called up there and said, hey, we're bringing a dog because we have the contracts. And they say, well, we quit taking out-of-town out dogs months ago. And it's like, I thought we had a contract. So, I don't. Very open to any ideas. And that's, I assume, Mayville and the rest of them are in the same. Yep, yep. It was, I think it, it I believe it was here, Mayville, Hatton. For sure that had the contracts. What do they pay to get their dog back then? I don't I don't remember what the what they ever charged for for housing up there. You guys did the transportation. We did the transportation and then the bills I if I am correct went to the cities. Okay, we got a bill? Because it was actually the cities that had the contracts. It was probably billed into our normal contract, our placing contracts we never ever seen. Because yeah. it's not really split out, it's just X amount of dollars. Yeah. I can, I think we have an issue. I know there's quite a few residents that have said that, and that's. Yep. I've been approached on it in the last week. I've probably been approached three or four times on it. Do so. you think there would be two or three people that would be willing to do that? So they didn't all share the burden? Or? If, if uh, even if we were in the kennel at the city, just a matter of just matter somebody of still making sure they're feeding and watering them. It should be inside too, shouldn't it? It should be inside. That's where we'd have to have, you know, we'd have to spend some money to to do this. Uh, we'd also have to, I mean, if we're going to do it, we could offer it to Mayville and Hatton, but they would have to end up paying some too. I can look into it and see what else we could we could do. We'd have to have, probably have some more on our insurance oh, for liability so. wise. You guys got room over in that garage behind that's heated, and yeah, that's pretty full with stuff, equipment now. The jail is empty. Stop it! What I said. <laughs> <laughs> so was the city hall basement. So was the basement. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> There's a doggy bark in the park. <laughs> That's so it's the kind of out of my house, so it's quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's JR has so a nice big so yard. So <laughs> I'll look into a little bit more, see what, it would, what we could do and couldn't do. So. And I'll run that thought process by the by Steve as well and see if, if we did look at something like that, even if it was just for our community, if that would be feasible. How many dogs, like, just on average per week, do you guys end up collecting? Is it we're getting calls. I'm, we're getting calls from, or um, I'm guessing we're probably getting two, three calls maybe a day. A day? Yeah. Is it the same? How many are the same? A lot of them are the same, and a lot of them are in the process. Two to three a day in Hillsboro. Of, of a, probably a, uh, countywide. Oh, countywide. Oh, yeah. Out of those, out yeah. Of those no, calls, I'm sorry. Not, not just Hillsboro. Out of those calls, how many dogs do you physically collect? We've been very fortunate that a lot of times the people that call them in, if they come and visit, we'll, we'll hold on to them. And it's gotten pretty popular to get people that will put it up on Facebook and their local community pages, and within hours they have them found. But that's been really helpful. So, And that's why I say the people have been super helpful in understanding that. I'm just we, thinking if there was a you know, centralized don't. spot, how, how, much, how many kennels or whatever you, know, mm -hmm. you would want or need to... So you don't want to put them all in the same spot. I would you think like four. Do they get tagged there? are supposed register? to be a tag when they Sometimes register the dogs. Sometimes they jump out of their collars. Sometimes they jump out of collars, yes. Um, when's the last time that, have you had anybody come and register a dog? Like, I know we yeah, but you'd still I know dogs. we found several dogs that have been dropped in town and not even owners. And I can actually say just within the last week or two, we had somebody in a we were never able to find a dog or confirm it, but somebody called from out by 
the beet plant and said that they had just watched somebody drop off a dog and drive away. So we are having a lot of drop offs too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Christmas dogs. Christmas dogs. Yep. Well, I'll do some more investigating. The other thing, I don't know, maybe ask Steve if you guys are willing that if you a little harder on the registration side of it, if they're if you come in contact with them and they're not registered, it's fine right away. Not. Maybe that will help some too, I don't know. Well, you need to put a little bite in it because they're not, if their dogs are gone and you're not registered. At yeah. Very, and at the very least, tell them, okay, bring me the collar with the <laughs> with the registration on it because, well, you know, if you if they were registered, it'd save you a lot of time. You'd automatically know who to call. Them. So. And there's some other options that we can do that will make them a lot easier. Like there's services out there that are free. That you just scan it, and then and we and we did actually have somebody that donated us a scanner, and come into that. A lot of them aren't chipped either. Well, not on or, the chip. That oh. it's an actual on the collar itself. It's it's a scannable collar, so if it's it'll come up automatically. Gotcha. Which we had tried to do that here with the same thing, but that never really nobody came in and. Are all the dogs you take to the vet will have to be registered? Is there a dog They're supposed to be. Oh, do you? Oh, what? I wonder if they verify that. I have two, and that's enough. The vet's not going to. The point of the verification is to make sure that if there was an act, if a dog bit, then we knew that the dog had rabies vaccine and was up to date. Mm -hmm. And we even said, I think our ordinance is set that it's not once a year, it's whatever the end date of your rabies vaccine is when you... Sounds right. That's when your license is good for. However long the rabies vaccine is for, that's how long it's good. It's every two years, years isn't it? Three. Like it's three. It's every three now. Yeah. Sounds like it's and I will. I can say that you know we we've typically been a little bit lenient and at least given them a warning. And there's been a lot more citations. We don't see the bills or the money from it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter to us. Okay. Well, I'll look into the other part of it and kind of go from there. Getting tin or steel in front of the hole in that door, the front door. Is it possible to have one of the guys from the city come and either weld, screw something, some steel in front of that big hole in the north door? We're noticing that little things are starting to wander into the entryway through that hole. <laughs> so, if we can get like a piece of steel, maybe we should just put a dog in the door. Well, you know, there would be a place There's to hold all your wandering dogs. But you're going to need new carpet in there then. Um, you know, daycare. Run around in this. Yeah. Yeah, except there's these licensing things that say no dogs allowed. Will you see if the same contractor will do that? <laughs> <laughs> That's my. Uh, the guys are shorthanded right now, so. Yes, I I will ask him if I have permission. I will have him do that too. Does everybody get permission to get that fixed? Yes. Yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. <laughs> Jason, do you have anything else? I, I you know, I, that's enough. That's enough. <laughs> I'll start calling you Paul. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to do with Paul's grabbing it in the night. Wait, he's got a pretty long list. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, I don't, I don't know. It should go into some time. It depends on how deep you want me to get into it. So, But uh, on the HEDC side, we had talked a few meetings back about incentives and, and all the research I've done. We do a lot of the incentives that the other communities do already. Probably the biggest thing, that, not the biggest thing, but one of the things that we don't do that some communities do do is uh, utility credits. And also, um, like hookups, electric hookups, they might split the cost, water hookups. So that's the two, that's the ones that kind of jumped out to me that some communities do. Not all, but some do. That would be something, I don't, I don't know if we're to that point where we need to, to do that now, but that's, but otherwise, as far as like now they're doing the $10,000 for homes and, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things out there right now to help. So. Well, prior homes. Until this year, it was a zero dollar hookup fee. Mm -hmm. So this is the first time that we've actually initiated because we've seen that there was a big. 
Well, and that's and that's because of cost, obviously. Right. Costs weren't nothing years ago compared to what they are now. So. And I would say we're, what we're at is probably half of what most of them are. Mm -hmm. so. But that's that's about that's the biggest ones that I noticed as far as incentives go that we don't already do a lot of. So I'm sure there's other things out there that I didn't see, but I did check with a lot of towns. So. Um, on the electrical side, uh, April 10th, we had a we had a meeting. Casey was there too, so she can give any input to something that I may have missed. Basically, it was a meeting we met with the Missouri River with the, the Barnesville Sam, uh, the lineman from Barnesville, and we also had uh, contact from Nodak. We also had a previous uh, uh, Nodak employee, Mel. Uh, he helped us, and then of course Brian was there and Jim was there, and we basically went over the situation that we have in Hillsborough right now to, to move forward, what we need to do, what we need to look at. Uh, they suggested a few things uh, that are pretty relevant right now. Uh, they're really concerned about the fact that we were missing two employees over there. And that really, that really concerns them, one being the lineman and then one being, of course, Jim. Uh, I asked why, you know, what, if we're doing something wrong and as far as, our, as, far as hiring, you know, are we off on our wages or what it is? And, and the whole, obviously they were all linemen there and they said, you're, you're way too low. You're not gonna get anybody to come for less than $50 an hour. So I'll just, and is that kind of what you got too, Casey? I yeah. don't know if it's in the budget or if it's something we wanna do, but uh, I think uh, we're probably not gonna, and I talked to two, two people that uh, have friends that were linemen that did look at it and they said that they couldn't take a $20,000 cut to come to Hillsborough. And that was both of them. Both of them were they couldn't take. They said they could, they'd be interested, but they, they, they're not gonna leave a job that pays what they're getting now, which is over $50 an hour. So, so that's, you know, I, I don't know how you guys wanna proceed with that. If you wanted to wait, or if somebody wanted to make a motion to increase that, or- What, what were we on three? 40, I believe, right? Yes. 40. 40. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we can sure wait, but the longer we wait, I, I just, I don't know. It's, it's, what do you guys think? Do you, you think it's, is it still in our budget range? Or are we going to be stretching it? Or? I wouldn't say that it's in our budget range, but ultimately we'll have the funds to do it. We just won't have as much reserve fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was, a, I mean, it was, they didn't even hesitate when I asked, well, ask Casey, she was there. They just, it, it wasn't enough. They said our benefits are great, you know, on par, but yeah, the wages. Is, Especially if you that. wanted an experienced person. And the ones that I yeah. had reached out to that uh, uh, was, they, they were in that $50 range. Is that, that's what they said, that's what they said too, so. So, and that's, and that's a big concern, especially the uh, Missouri River, Sam, that, uh, if we don't if we don't increase that we're probably not going to get anybody to even apply he said you know if you can get them you know i guess you could if you can get because you can offer 50 or you could do a range and if they meet the qualifications you're looking for well then you can pay them the 50 but if they don't obviously you can if you do that range you know my, my concern is what are we, what's what's it going to take and i think i did ask that casey what what is it going to take somebody to apply what are they going to have to see you know, to get them to even call, to inquire about it. Have you had any inquiries? Not on so electrical, okay. not on public works. So we did on labor, but yeah. yeah. So, so for the two guys, if, would they be ever interested in, if the pay increased maybe even more than that, that they would want to do the linemen and the public works as one position? Never, never talked about it, no. I don't think we want to do that. Don't want to do that? I think we have too many things that we need to to work on, and some of it I'll talk about in the budget the, update, that we need somebody just. I, I agree with Liam. I think you would be stretching them pretty thin, especially when they got really into the, if they're doing their job, they'd probably get, now you could maybe argue that if we're three years down the road and he had everything kind of up to snuff, 
and depending that's what on I what's worry going about. on. But, but I don't, you're still going to be, the only thing that's going to keep him from not being busy is if we can't find the materials that he needs. And if we can't find things here, possibly we can, we have other Missouri River, if mm -hmm. Sam's busy, yeah. well, maybe they can go to Lakota or Cavalier and help, or Northwood and help right. out. And, that, and that's definitely, I would think, I've never talked to Sam about that, but I'm sure that's something that if they were qualified, I'm sure he wouldn't. I do, that's the only thing I do worry about is if they run, you know, they don't utilize the full, like they don't need the full time, well mm -hmm. then they're pretty much getting paid $40 an hour because they're not... But I think we'll, they'll be able to, for the full time. You know what I mean? Like, so but I think they'll be doing other things. Run into that. I think they'll be doing other things, or they we may need help with other areas. So. That that's de you definitely have a good point. There's no doubt about that because you know we're we're in a small community, and if they're waiting for something, it's. But it really, to me, it comes down to what. Do you want to on a small on a small outage? Do you want to wait a half hour? Or do you want to wait three hours? You know, because that's really what the difference is. Because you know, we always had NODAC here, and it wasn't long to get. And the reality is, we don't have that here anymore. So if you're if you're okay to wait, and you're okay to piece things together as we go, that's fine. But the reality is, is still no. Yeah, if we could luck out and get that guy, that's that's okay. He's he's energetic or whatever, but he doesn't want that hundred twenty thousand dollar year salary. You know that uh, you know. So now we can kind of work part time. That would be that would be a perfect fit, but how, where are you going to find that guy? Yeah, I don't know. You know, so how much are we looking right the, uh, for the, that right next to the Jim's yeah. position? What are we? What are the, what do we got the wages listed on that? Starting at seventy. Seventy thousand a year. For I'm sorry, which position was that? Jim. Jim. Mm -hmm. so, but I'm just I'm just. You know, if we can make a motion on it, they could update it. It's, you know, it's. She knows the numbers. You guys know the numbers. I know it's. I know it's tough. It's going to be tough paying somebody. You know, if they're running out, if they're waiting for something to pay fifty dollars an hour to go, even if they want to go and dig a help. But maybe that's something that we could pursue. I don't know what the insurance side of it would be or anything. Maybe that's something that we look at if, uh, if another community that Missouri River takes care maybe maybe there's something that they could go and assist with because they're always looking for help you know and uh you know of course you'd have to have that conversation with whoever you hired too but uh i could sure i could sure reach out to him and ask him if that's ever an option you know it would probably just well, we got to hire somebody first right right well but that might it might address her concern of how busy they would be you know so but as we were once told we wouldn't have a we have a lifetime work to get done here, so. So if they're on, if they're here and we have an outage, is there a guarantee that they're going to be able to respond and we're not waiting an hour? I would. I, I think so you're would, still going to have. Would like Missouri or whoever. Well, if we hire, we'd still have to give him. He wouldn't be on call all the time. You couldn't right. ask him to be on call all the time. You'd have you'd have those weekends when he's off. You would probably have to still have. Barnesville or NODAC come in and help because obviously we can't until Brian gets the, the more Brian gets skilled and, and that's another thing too is if we have a lineman here that's going to get Brian more it's going to get him moved along on his apprentice lineman a lot faster okay. and he gets to the point where he can now maybe you know he could maybe because he's familiar with enough that maybe he could you know something small he could he could do he could be walked through or something like that uh, well all I know is we don't really if we don't have anybody here, we really don't, we limit our options. Well, and there's also, we forget about Halstead and has their own utilities as well that we never talk about, I believe, as well. So so there's other options around the coast that we could look into. Requires two men to be on a, on a truck. You can't just have a line all by himself on our calls. No. And have, well, I'm, I'm guessing it depends on what it is. You can easily have a one of the shot, one of the whoever's on call with the city, I'm sure goes out now. So. Well, I when I'm who was all there when the night you had one on the road by your place? Was it just Sam or not? No, there was. Uh, everybody was there except for Jay. No. I, I know when when Nodak came down the one time when there was an outage right over here. They had Nodak had two guys and plus Brian was there too. You know, so. And that's my question: is if mm -hmm. if we. 
do we know the requirements? Do we need do we need alignment and do we need a ground man that's got the that's what Brian the that's what experience? Brian. Yeah, so that's what I'm that's what I'm asking. And you're gonna and a lot of your work you're gonna be doing, you're still gonna have to bring in somebody from either NODAC or, or Sam or one of them guys. They're still gonna have to come in because there's a lot of stuff that you're gonna have to require to have two. But if we have one, it's gonna be a lot easier to send one person up, whether Sam comes by himself, whoever that's gonna, you know, there might they might be able to find a way to let one come up and help versus two of them. You know, it's, I, you know that's all things we have to work. But but I, I just look at it from the standpoint if we don't have one, we're really we're really limiting what we want. And and uh, and I guess it comes down to people. I keep repeating myself, but it's a time thing. You know, it's gonna we know it's gonna if it's something small. I, I hate to have to wait for something if it's just something small that you know because. Jim and all them guys have been doing a lot through the years, and obviously it's been handy with NODAC here. And it's going to be until we get Brian up and trained, it's going to be tough. So we we'll have to start saving. Well, probably I'm guessing it'll take a couple years. So depends on how much experience. How much? Um, and this is another thing too that Sam said is the more you can get him going because it's hours. I can't remember how many hours. It's a whole year. Basically, it's a whole year hours, two thousand or whatever it is. I can't remember. But uh, and don't quote me on that. But uh, it takes a lot mm -hmm. just to, to get that. So, and he hasn't got. He said that's another problem you're going to have. Is it's going to take him a turn to get to get there if you don't have somebody here to right. to get him the hour, help him get the hour. So, but that's. I don't know what your thoughts are. I think we should go at least 55. If, if they're and saying we, 50, we you know, we might as well. Well, there's no reason we couldn't put the range 40 to 55. And at least they're calling. No, I meant starting at 50 or 55. Oh, well, okay. Yep. I'm not going to argue. <laughs> 55, plus, or $55 an hour plus, but you guys have to make the motion. So. I'll make the motion. 55 or 50? 50? 55. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Dave, seconded by Paul to raise the electrical lineman position to $55 an hour starting. Is there any other discussion? So we can afford that in our yeah, we'll make it work. We're already into April, so we had budgeted the whole year. So that'll help. So. And then will that come straight out of our electrical fund? Yeah. yeah, it'll be all out of electrical. Yeah, all out of electrical. Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jason? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. And then uh, <coughs> to, to add on to that, like I said, we're going to be doing a lot of we're just going to kind of be finishing up some stuff they started with the boring last year. They're going to just do a lot of connecting, kind of finishing up some projects. And one of those projects is the electrical right behind City Hall here. They just redid a box over by uh, by the grocery store last year. And that's another one that's, that's uh, scheduled to be done this year. And uh, that's not a big deal as it is compared to the grocery store because obviously if Casey's out of electricity for four hours... It's not as bad as the grocery store being out of electricity for <laughs> We only have to listen to Casey. We don't have to listen to every grocery store. <laughs> Just joking. But anyway, that is, the reason I bring that up is because Jim had mentioned that for future in an emergency, would we want to put a Generac at the same time back there? Because this would be a, you know, in emergency situations, this the only thing may be used if there's major outages or something. Would you want to put something that's basically, because he said he can get and put it, you, you have something similar to that, don't you know what size? He was guessing somewhere in that five to seven range, is that some, Probably. right? Probably. You know, he, he thought that that would be, when they're, they're doing that, that would be a good time to get that set up. But he just suggested it, asked me to see what uh, he thought would be a good idea. Yeah, I've never had one before, but... Uh, you know, they are a little more reasonable now than they probably were 10 years ago, price-wise. But uh, you, you'd probably know the history more of Hillsborough if we've had issues where we need something like that or not. Are you just talking about running City Hall? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's a great idea myself. I don't well, I guess it would run the, this whole yeah. this facility, too. So it would be sized to do that. I so. know the fire department has kicked around putting one on their building, too. And we could, and, and I, we'd obviously get bids and everything on it. But uh, if you're open to it, we can get some bids. And I think you should. Comes. My, that's my personal opinion. So 
We'll go ahead and get bids for that. And then um, on the, you'd asked about the street lights. Brian had looked at them. He said there's 38 poles that are in need of paint. Uh, there's nine lights that are that have wiring uh, ground uh, ground faults that need to be addressed, and uh, and that included issues with them in the pole. So they did get a an estimate for. An, he said, Jim said that he got an estimate for $400 to rewire a pole. That's pulling wires. He said, but until they do the first one, that's kind of where they're at because they don't really know what's all going to be involved to pull. So what they got to do is they, is they got over, everything's overhead wire for the most part now because all the ground ones are getting bad. So what they'll do is they'll put in new wiring in the pole and a socket also because I think nine of those are the ones that didn't have the Christmas lights lit up last year because the wiring is just bad. And he estimated $400 to do that. We could get more a more firm code at that time if, you know, if that's something that we really want to do versus if we if we do get the whole pool it just depends on what you get it could be you know the bottom of the line around two grand versus up to four to five sam so for for the light bulbs so so it, you know maybe be beneficial to maybe look at seeing how many of them we can get wired in and it before christmas <laughs> and get those working just uh so that's an option, and the painting bid was if if they if they came to Hillsboro, they prefer to do at the minimum at least ten of them, and they and that bid I didn't bring it with was seven hundred fifty dollars. So I don't get for I'm ten not or for eight. each one for, for each 10. one, yeah, yeah. Well, seven fifty for each for one. each pole, yeah. And that would be ten of them. So you know, and obviously if we did more, maybe that could change. But he said he wouldn't do. He wouldn't. He wouldn't. He's out of Grand Forks. He wouldn't come here for less than that. So. They have to bring. It would be a be a few day project, he said. So, but uh, uh, I can get more information on that. I don't. I don't. He said they wouldn't be available to do it yet this summer. Right now, their schedule isn't full. But they have to uh, attend every one of them. Well, not apparently the way they do it. No. So they, they, it sounds like they 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 can hand they hand do a lot of it, and then they got they have some special paint. He was trying to explain to me that that, that it kind of just disintegrates or something after it's so far after it's on and once it's so if there's any overspray it just basically I don't know anything about painting but he said because I asked him that same question and uh, so yeah. and, I'd, and I'd probably do a little bit more researching on it but I thought I'd just get a get us an idea is as there, we go forward uh, do we want to do it there do we need to do it this year I obviously wouldn't do it until restrictions on the wire like so I, I prefer that we don't even you know, we kind of got an idea on what it's going to cost, but I'd rather look at the wiring before we did anything. That's my priority. Uh, you know, we get we're looking at here in 20, what 30 or something like that. We'll be celebrating, you know, uh, 150 years or whatever it might be. You know, so maybe you know, as we get closer to that, I hate to paint them. Then the seven years down the road, the paint is starting to come off just before. I mean, then we would like them looking nice. So, but uh, well. I know it's not in the budget, but we, Casey's looking to see if the legacy fund highway earnings could be used, but we could also use the municipal infrastructure fund for that project to get it all completed if you would like. I think you could. Um, it says the allocations are made using the highway distribution formula for counties and distributions to townships based on road miles. Um, cities are included. Funds received can be used for any construction, reconstruction, repair, and maintenance of public highways, which includes equipment, salaries, gravel, etc. Um, so this is all highway. Right. Yeah. So it could be used for that. So if somebody wanted to make a motion, you could to stand up to the. Twenty thousand, or twenty-five, or twenty-nine, whatever you'd like. And get them fixed. Paul, I can make the motion. It's kind of self-serving, but <laughs> <laughs> what's the motion? I'll How make much? the motion to whatever that's allowable in that fund. What did you say it was, Casey? Twenty-nine. 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 Seven fifty-nine. Twenty-two. And then we should specify that it would be for for electrical. Redoing the poles and painting, correct? Correct. Is there a second? And I will check one more place for painting prices to make sure that we're in the ballpark there. Is there a second? I'll 
I'll second it. Moved by Paul, seconded by Dave. Is there any other discussion? Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Jason? Yes. Dave? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. And then... Um, Careful, Paul. <laughs> He's going to bring a pillow and a bed next time. There you go. No, <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm, down to, I'm getting down Come to the on now. I just basically want to remind everybody that we are... Just meet the minutes. A couple, a couple of things on the, you know, the rate study is still in the works, I'm assuming, right? Second half of the year. Okay, so that's still coming. And uh, so at that point, we should look at, you know, we engineer a lot of things. We may, we may need to look at maybe getting some funds to put in to check that out, too, as far as the whole system and where we're at, what needs to be done. You know, from a professional, as far as balancing load and all that stuff, we got uh, MEI I that was a lot of that. Is it done? It's supposed to be. Uh, I just told me too. It's. It's. I don't remember. It's. It's. It's pretty well done. Right that. Because Sam was saying that that could be that he was going to share that information with a company that would do this if if we go that route. So yep. Okay. So. And maybe maybe do you remember Casey? That was talked about. I know that. Sam did talk about uh, MEI, the, the loads, the, the, did you write anything in your notes about it? Oh, look, I can't remember. I remember him talking about it. Um, let's look. Um, there's your leaning poles. Um, but I, I know that he talked about it. If it wasn't done, it was, it was there. It just needed to be basically mm -hmm. shared. So, but I will follow up on it. I'm running out of papers. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep it all on one page. I'm not going to. That's why you have a notebook right there. I guess that was, from, that was from the meeting the other day. So, where's your notebook? So you have it all in one spot. <laughs> so. Yeah, I don't see that I wrote anything down for MEI, Paul. Sorry. I remember talking about them, though. Okay. okay. Yeah. I just, he has a lot of like this, so it's all in there. Yeah. It doesn't well, matter. I, I get so much writing, I got to go to the next meeting page, the next meeting page. <laughs> Cliff notes. So, okay. Uh, and, anything else? That's all I got, except I do want to, before you call on her, has anybody talked to the airport about uh, about uh, ask the millings? Because I did talk to Jay, and he said that, yeah, they could definitely use them. So I'm gonna, if it's all right with you, I'll just have him reach out to the airport. How much is there? Do you know? He didn't say how much. So. I think, I think we should. First. Well, I think, honestly, I think we should look at getting all of it if we can, because. He said they didn't. He, he said, said we can have all of it. Except for they have a little bit. He said today they have some on some roads that they want to do a little bit. It wasn't much that they wanted to use part of it. So. But I think we have quite a few places that we can yeah. put it to. Yeah. So. And, and, and Jay I'll said give that Jay they. The number yeah, to call. yeah. I told Jay I would get it for him, and okay. then uh, and then um, he also would like to. At some point, he would like to invite ever like to have, invite a bus all out there to what they did, you know, for maybe maybe before a meeting, you know, five o'clock or something, and he'd like to invite everybody out on the commission. He said he would have liked to been here tonight, but he had something going on and he couldn't make it, but. Uh, he said to kind of plant the seed that if that would be something that we would be interested in, he'd like to kind of show what, what the city dollars have been being used for. So if we're open to that, I'm sure you'd have, a, you know, you'd have to put it on a, as a meeting, but, uh, yep. you know, we could, we could get out there. And I thought, I thought it would be, be interesting to see what they're doing with everything out there. So, but if you want, I can sure mention that to him or she can talk to Kyle is what I talked to. So, yeah. so. If that's something that we, we would be interested in doing before a meeting or if we want to do it on a separate night or whatever, just just let him know and see if they can coordinate something like that. Did you want to talk to Kyle about that part? Call him. Okay. Is you, are you guys interested or not? That would be. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Okay. Is that it? That's all. Well, I'm oh. quitting. I'm quitting my list, even if there's some left. <laughs> I have nothing. So. <laughs> well, you should have told me that before I quit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
I will try to make it as quick as I can. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to fall under our trap, yeah. right? Uh, we met, Casey and I met with Ide Bailey last Thurs uh, Thursday. 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 Um, the audit is pretty much done. They have to send it to their internal redundancy auditors to make sure that everything that they caught is good. So there may be a few more things that will come back, but most of it should be good. All right. The 360 foot level that I'll give you is none of this was surprising to me. Everything that came up in the audit was things that uh, I kind of already figured and knew, and some of us have learned along the way. Um, this one, the one thing that uh, has been in our audit or been dinged on every year in the audit is we do, do not have fixed assets. We don't count those, which that's what we are working on with the everything Casey's been working on with getting the line items of all of our equipment. So hopefully maybe by the 25 audit or 26 audit, she'll have it all, all good to go. <laughs> Um, the segregation of duties we'll see, which we've always seen, which is not going to be uncommon either because of the city size, unless we want to hire, you know, like five more people to be in the city office. I don't think that's feasible. Um, the way it looks, um, journal entries were um, made, not made. There's not a standard for it, so we need to look at that. Um, transfers that were supposed to happen didn't happen, so we need to have maybe a transfer policy in place, and the bank recons need to be done a little bit more efficiently and sooner. And those were things that we had seen in the past, and why our balances were so low in a lot of different funds or so off was transfers were scheduled and supposed to happen, but never happened. So that's the 360 foot view. Um, but he is hoping that uh, they were hoping to send it over to, for that second layer review and then it's one to two weeks depending on how long that'll take. So they're hoping by middle of May that we should have paper in our hands and be able to see the final audit for all three years. And then we'll start on the 2023 audit right away. Give me like a week break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so. That is on that portion. Um, summer employees, in the past, we've talked about 50 cents an hour. And I think there was some cute infusion. The pool guys, pool employees maybe got a dollar an hour raise, and our public work guys only got a 50 cents an hour raise last year, last couple of years. Um, so, I think to keep consistent, we should stick with that dollar hour raise. It sounds like we only have one coming back from previously in public works. So we maybe should catch that person up to where they should be for this coming year. So maybe a $2 raise for that person and the rest at a dollar. When we get there, um, I'm not even gonna think about public or pool employees until we find somebody for the pool. So. Um, We've got two uh, two applicants for public works seasonal. One came in on Friday and the other came in today. I think Friday. We'll just wait on those. Okay. Um, and on the pool side, I reached out to AA2S and Steve, and they're working on some stuff. He hadn't gotten it done yet. Um, from planning and zoning, they did. Um, we had a very packed house that night. Dave, it's the, the old days of being over there, and they were standing out the door. It was almost there. So. It was packed house that night. Um, they're working on the container ordinance. JR has some things that he'll be working on for them. And then they're still revising. Um, they didn't get much time to talk amongst themselves because there was a lot of outside input on it. So they're still working on that. 
they did have a presentation from a potential builder of um, duplexes, or not duplex, fourplexes, um, potentially looking in Riverwalk, the section that's right behind um, a country. A country and, yep, farm credit. A country and the ASCS office, so that whole block. The south side. So, the side, they were, side. Yep, so they were pretty open to that. The one thing that came out of that that you guys will be, con that we need to be concerned about here is that they, in order to do that, they're going to need some sort of, they said TIF or uh, payment in lieu, or we'll have to look at something. So. Uh, nothing this year the way it sounded to be a couple years if they needed to get the ball rolling um, they came to planning zoning and basically asked if they were willing to rezone that because we'd have to rezone it as an R2 or it's an R3 right now um, one quick thing on that too they had emailed me today um, and asked for a meeting with commission um, I asked if they wanted to have it during a meeting or smaller setting non-quorum. So they haven't gotten back to me yet, okay. but do you guys have a preference? Would you like me to invite them to the next meeting? Or no? If they want to. Okay. Otherwise, they don't. I'll just let them know that. Um, beautification had their meeting as well. They're working on the tree grant. Um, we were hoping to see a little bud so that we could see what trees we were going to look at taking out. Uh, that hasn't happened yet. So May 4th, they're going to go around and look at trees in the community and see what ones we can take out and kind of go from there and then look at new ones to be put in. Uh, we're probably going to be have to plant them in the fall, which some people claim that that is the best time to plant trees is in the fall instead of in the spring. So looking at replacing them in the boulevards at that point and taking them out now throughout the year. Um, they're also, uh, they had a concern on a property and we're working with JR on the process of abatement and what to do there. I'll talk to you a little bit about it. So what we're going to go from there. And then the last thing that I'm going to throw out to you, all of you, to think about this is not a set in stone this is not something saying that we're going to do this right away but um, something to think about and as we're planning for the future and have those things that we need for the future um, currently our sales tax is seven and a half percent we can go up to eight and a half percent so we could add another one percent onto that the one idea that I had with that is that we would add an additional one cent sales tax if you guys are willing to put it on the ballot. Uh, we are a, a city that could do it without the ballot, being that we are a chartered city, but I don't think that would be the, the best route to go. But my thought process behind that is that we use those funds as a savings or a rainy day type fund. One example would be um, we would set it so that the first 1.5 million of the fund would build up and sit there and only the interest on that fund could be used for public safety. Um, you could keep building it up over time as we're seeing skyrocketing in not just our budget, we have fire department budgets, we have policing contract. Can we generate a fund that'll self-sustain itself or all we have to do is add some more throughout the years? At 1.5 million, if you had it in the fund, you could generate about 50 to 60,000 a year, depending on the interest rate. You know, um, you look at our policing contract went from 190,000 when we first started to I don't know where we're at this year. It's up, um, it's up quite two, a bit. Yeah, 200 and some. Great. So could that be a way for us to help sustain funds to, you know, 
where you have a sustained amount of money in that fund that doesn't get taken out so that the interest is bearing off of that. Any excessive funds that come off of that, can we use it then to pay for streets, other things without having to go and bond? Or also, can we use it to help sustain the general fund, help bring some of that down? That always seems to be the headache of our community. When people come in, is their taxes are too high? So is there a way that we can offset? You know, maybe we need to build it up to $10 million. I don't know what the answer is. But at the end of the day, we'd have to write an ordinance that would say what we wanted to do with it, how it would stay. You know, and I'm what I'm thinking is is that if we put in 1.5 million, it can never come out unless it's voted on by the public. And every year or every five years, the commission would have to look at it and say, is there enough? And do we need to build that up some more so that there's enough money in there? Can you do that? Raise your taxes? Or no, raise can, sales can, you, can we have that much? Can we have a fund like that? If it's dedicated, then... If it's not the general fund. We can't have... We can't... If we're levying money, we can't only levy 75% or keep 75%. Mm -hmm. If it's any other fund, we can. So if you raise this fund, like let's say for streets, use the money for the streets, but that still comes back as specials on where they're getting done? No, not necessarily. So let's say we we build it. First, we're, we're going to say it's used for public safety. You build up to 1.5 million. The rest gets pulled up, but you can't touch this 1.5 ever. Can't take that out because the only thing that you can use out of is the interest that would pay for public safety. Then it keeps building your fund, and let's say we want to build a new pool, and maybe there's four million dollars built in there. Well, we can now take three million dollars out of there to help pay for pool or four, or whatever we need. We still may need to bond, but we don't touch that fund unless it is used for whatever we set it as. We have to set it up in the beginning very well and thought out if we're going to do this. But think of it as a... I think we somewhat did this in the, the 455 but it's not enough. We generated, when I first started looking at sales tax, when, he, when uh, a couple years ago, we generated maybe 300000 We generated $790,000 in sales tax this year, or this past year. A fifth of that goes to HEDC. But... If we had another one set, and it's not, you're not taking a big hit out of the out of the property owners. You're getting people that are driving by off the interstate. Off the interstate, you're getting all these things. Like I said, this is not a set in stone. This was meant to get start your the start the conversation. You know, maybe we could get it started by then. But I think it needs to be a fund that is. Similar to the 455 where it's set up, you can only use it for certain things, but maybe we only use it for, you know, large capital improvement projects. Maybe that's the wording that we use. Like streets. Like streets, like, right. Those big projects that we need to do that we can't fund. And you look at and you say $14 million where you're going to have to spend for streets now we're going to bond that for 20 years and we got to try to keep up with all the other things even if it's and the sooner that you can put it in there the sooner that you're going to be able to start drawing the interest off and maybe it's in a money market maybe it's in something else but you know it is very similar you know you could say to the legacy fund and maybe there could be two pools, one pool for public safety, one pool for, I don't know. Something to think about. I know nobody ever wants to talk about taking more money, but this is a, there is communities out there that are at eight, 
percent. Um, I'd rather be a sales tax than a special. It won't eliminate the specials, but no, but it, it would drop your special considerably. I would yeah. hope. If you could, I mean, if we generated two hundred thousand dollars a year, or whatever it is, I don't know. I don't know what's going to be. That. Huh? I'm sure it would be that. Right. So it's going to take a while to build it up, but still, if you don't touch it. So, something to think about there. Uh, Dave didn't touch on it, but we did meet on the railroad or on the the bridge project, and. They'll, the one thing that they are probably going to look at, unless there was big things, and I just want to make sure that you guys are okay with it, is they're not going to put the curve in. It'll most likely be a straight bridge. So. Again, it's not going to be 27, is that what they said? Yeah, it'll be 27. They'll build in 26, and it'll be put in 27. And there'll be a three to four foot raise above what it's at currently. Okay, and that is all I have on that. The rest is all on the agenda. So. JR, do you have anything additional tonight? Nothing for me. <laughs> Casey? Show off. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah and Abby will be gone. They're leaving for MRES training tomorrow. Um, they'll be back on Thursday. Um, other than that, I have nothing. Okay. Um, 411 Main Street, there was a letter sent um, from Beautification. We never got a response back. Um, it was missed at the meeting, but I don't think there will be, be an issue from the, the Beautification side. They would have forwarded on here anyway. Is that the whole school line? No, this is further down. This is... Um, towards the city shop. Yeah, towards the city. So it's, I, I looked at rooms. it. What was the, what's the issue? There's with garbage it? bags garbage in the backyard. Was, Oh, in the backyard. Oh, that's right. The front yard doesn't look too bad. It's the backyard. The, back the backyard. The front, there's... I saw a trampoline. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Garbage there, in the back. Garbage in the back. Um, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so I just would like, our normal procedure has been that uh, a letter from JR, if you'd like to charge, and then at the same time, we would ask the sheriff's department to charge as well. Is that received into the city? The, the city office? Yeah, quite a few times. He's been, um, the neighbor has brought in pictures and sent Is pictures. Still living there? To my knowledge, yeah. According to the neighbor, yes. So, yeah, the neighbor has complained and brought pictures and stated um, that the trash bins just aren't put out on the street ever. The trash just goes in the backyard. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. If you got yep. a tote, why wouldn't you? If the bags are back there, if they just put them, they fill up their tote every week and a month, they'd be cleaned up. Mm -hmm. So, do I have a motion to have JR send a letter plus also have the Sheriff's Department site? I'll make a motion to. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Paul, seconded by Dave. Is there any other discussion? Dave? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jason? I'll abstain. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Um, the cleanup week date, uh, the one that we had sent, they had asked us to move it back to the 13th. I was hoping um, Jim would have may maybe been here. Um, there was discussion of moving it back to the 13th because the hope initially was to have Countrywide bring in trucks to help the guys with cleanup week. Yep. Um, but they'd rather have they'd rather have it the week of the 6th still. Or I take that back. Whichever whichever week 
that Brian will still be here. They'd like to have Brian here and give up the countrywide truck. That's the 13th. Okay. Yeah, it's 13th. Okay. Okay. Is everybody okay with how? Okay. So May 13th? Yes. Okay. Um, I guess. 15th, is it? 13th. 13th. That's what I thought. I thought it was 15th. Right after. 13th. The B, item B, I think we covered, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. The cemetery farmland lease agreement, I think we just need to reach out, and I think that was one of the duties that Jason has, because it's cemetery, and he didn't even know that he had to do. So. Oh, I was like, did I forget something? No. So... <laughs> We'll have to reach out to that landowner and make sure we get that done for the next one. Is that annually? I think it's every two years or I'm, three. I wasn't sure. I just saw it on the agenda from last oh, year. Sorry. Oh, if it's on last year, then it's not this year. Yeah, because I okay. thought we voted on it last yeah. year. So then you don't have to worry about that. Okay, so scratch that. You did. Yeah, good job. Good job, Jason. Way to go. <laughs> You're on the ball. Yeah. All right. Uh, didn't even know it. Hillsborough Days, we have a street closure, would be the first thing. Everybody had seen those. And if you approve, just need a motion. I'll make the motion. Dave makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Jason. Any other discussion? Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. Jason? Yes. Nicole? Yes. And yes for me. Motion carries. They also have a local event permit for the dances. If you guys. For the 50 50 raffle. Or for the raffle. Excuse yep. me. Uh, coincidentally, during the dances, but yes. Yep. <laughs> as long as it's on Facebook. Do I have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. <laughs> a second? Second? I'll second. Moved by Nicole, seconded by Jason. Is there any other discussion? Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Jason? Yes. Dave? Yes. And a yes for me. Motion carries. Uh, next item I had put on. This kind of started with when John was still working. He had brought up last year that they had used one of these. It's a, um, a VAC. This one is a little bit more because it's a VAC and uh, pressure washer built in, so they can use it as a jetter as well. It's a steamer. Steamer, a steamer. yep. So it's more compact. They didn't have to worry about water. They liked this smaller size as it would fit in the backyards. Um, we, it is in the budget based on that um, we had put a snowplow truck in for it. They would prefer this over the snowplow. They said they could even use it for, uh, like when they're doing streets and high fire hydrants, they're able to then, instead of contracting out to get one of these to come in, they can use it to clean out the, the gutters and different things. So a lot of utility work they would appreciate it for, a lot of man hours back-breaking labor so it is out of Ames it was the probably the better shape one that we could find small enough that they could get in the backyards and this one should last quite a while it was a rental unit so. I don't have a problem with them getting this but my concern is just because we had a nice winter that we that one snow plow truck needs to be replaced, that one single axe one. And, you know, not all the winters are going to be like this. And I think we should still look at a snow plow truck. I don't have any problem getting this, but I think we should keep on the look for, let them look for a snow plow truck also. Well, there was a pickup in the budget as well, so I mean, those. We can maneuver that yeah. around. But this was a request of all the employees that they wanted. So yeah, and I like I said, I don't have any problem, but I think I think we we should, we should look for another snowplow truck. What did we have budgeted total for the snowplow and the um, vehicle? I can tell you here. They said they'd probably use it at least a couple times a month or more. A couple times a month or more? They have one now? We do not have one now. What was it? 
They've been renting one. They've been renting one. Borrowing one and renting one. I just got to find where we had, what budget we had put it in. I'm trying to pull my budget up too. They also cite it's not with natural gas in town too. It's nicer because they're not digging. Clean out about hitting the natural gas. For the ball truck or for both? For, it was 50000 for each. As far as the new pickup, I, you know, they've got, my opinion is they've got more pickups down there than they have employees right now. What do you need is a new pickup? And they would probably take this over to pick up. I think so. <laughs> and we can still look at a snow plow truck. I mean, yeah, I, that'd, that'd be great. Where would we have the money for the snow plow truck budgeted? About a 450? Is that where you're looking? 450, yep. So there'd be 30,000. No, no, it's not 30,000. Well, could that be pushed into next year? Or not? It could be pushed into, yes, into 2020. Five. My only concern, just speaking out loud, is I we we bumped taxes in our budget quite a bit this last year to try to catch up, and you know, and to make that we're not overspending. And I, I just want to make sure that we're not going to be overspending and have to. I don't want to have to answer for that. I agree. Great. said this was the one thing that they had specifically asked for when I talked with them. Um, and they were even excited about getting something to help them. It's a lot less, like Paul said, getting around things. So I think they would be willing to hold off on other things if they were able to get this. Who were they renting? Were they renting one out of Fargo or something? Um, they used Nosteds for a little while. Otherwise, they'll get a back truck like Bedecker will come in and do some of it. And so. It was hard finding a small enough one that they were worried about getting in backyards to make sure that we wouldn't wreck. So. And there isn't much for used equipment like this. Around the new one was about one hundred and twenty thousand. So a motion to approve. They would forego the pickup in the snow plow for this year. I think so. Yes. If they're willing to do that, I'd make a motion to go ahead and purchase this. Okay. Is there a second? Dave, seconded by Nicole, to forego the pickup and the plow check for this year and purchase the jet, the vac instead. All in motion? Yep. yep. Is there 
Any other discussion? Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Dave? For me, motion carries. Next item is Red River Water Supply Project. She put those in your packet, right? Mm -hmm. So we had a meeting last Wednesday. This is a project that's been going on for a while. You guys. Um, we had approved it back 2014, somewhere there. The city of Hillsborough stuck some money into it. Um, there will be a contract coming out if we want to continue with this. We have committed, or what we had asked for was 0.5 cubic feet per minute of capacity from the supply project uh, for industrial uses. I am not sure what East Central has bought in. If they're also in the project, Mayville is at 0.5 per cubic feet as well. Um, we are looking at about a $3.76 impact per month for our residents. It was on their bills for this. Um, that's how they figured it out, just what it would cost residents. Um, this is just for the use of it and to help pay for the project. This is not, if it actually we wanted to use the water, then there would be more additional costs based on that. And how it works is they are started building this. There's a pipeline that they're using. Plus the, they did get authorization to use the McCuskey Canal. So the water would be coming out of the Missouri River, or out of the Missouri River, pumped into the McCluskey Canal, come through, put into pipes, and then dumped into the Cheyenne, which would come down, feed Fargo, Grand Forks, and all their communities. Um, there's a lot of communities that have bought into it. The goal of it is, is to make sure that if there is a drought year that those communities have water. Obviously, we're not going to get the benefit of it as well. That's why our costs are a lot lower because we have to get our water come in from, uh, we can get it off the red or we can get it off of the <coughs> around Carrington area, I think. Cooperstown, maybe. The Cheyenne Club there? It's all dependent on where they were going to dump <coughs> it. I can't remember exactly. So, And there's a proposed line that was going to run. I can't remember exactly where it was at. And so you don't have to decide on this tonight. Uh, the contract we hope to get fairly soon so that JR can look at it. And hopefully the second contract will come even sooner because it's like 334 pages. And so I expect Paul to read all of that. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. You're welcome. You got like a help. <laughs> uh, but basically what it's going to cost us is 32000 dollars a year to buy in to get the 0.5 cubic feet. Um, so we just need to know if that's what we want to stay at or if you guys want to go up for more potentially. This is for industrial usage is what we had. So generally they're going to take raw water, not finished water unless it's a um, food processing type plant then they would want a finished product. So you guys can think about that. No decision has to be made tonight. I'll let you guys look at it. I'll come on this uh, last page. Why is Mayville's, I thought you said they were doing the same thing. They have more uh -huh. residents. Well, they have more residents. More residents or more hookups, so their prices oh, really? are... really? That much more? That's how they figured it out. So. Wow. 
we didn't have any more hookups. Yeah. That's hard to believe. And they had it built in, so it's a slowly gradual uh, payment. Uh, you know, 2024, it's going to be less, and then it slowly goes up to that 376. There's some North Dakota bank loan that is paying for part of the project. Um, Grand Forks and Fargo has split a lot of the upfront costs that have been up till today. Um, like I said, we could go up in our usage if you want. Just know that we need to know that fairly soon if that's something probably by the next meeting if you want to change the cubic feet per minute. Uh, potential. It's all about industrial use. So, it, so that, what are you, what, how are we going to benefit as far as residents then? The residents don't. I mean, the residents could, if we ran out of water and we needed water, that would be enough to supply us, the city. But when before us decided that they wanted to buy into the project, they dedicated only 0.5 cubic feet per minute for industrial use. They didn't say residential. That doesn't mean we can't take that water our water treatment plant would not process it. There's some other work because you're taking surface water compared to groundwater. Um, Interesting. So it's meant to benefit industrial, but it's going to cost the resident more a month? That was what it was bought in for, was the potential for the city to... It doesn't mean that we have to put this money for the residential. It could come out of other funds, but they, when they split it, this is what it costs per. They didn't say per resident; they said it per hookup. And we can give you the full packet that we had. That's a lot more pages, and it tells you how much water is needed. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just trying to grasp like Paul asked how. It's costing the residents that, but it's actually to benefit the industrial. What, what's the, what did the commission previously see as the benefit for? I can't tell you because I wasn't on when we did this. So, um, it, I mean, I'm guessing they looked at it as what if we had a um, I would suspect a meat processing plant is going to take. I think it's 20 cubic feet per minute of water. I would guess it would be so that it alleviates the water that we're using in the plant. So instead of using that on the industrial side, it would be just, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be putting the stress on it as much. Correct. Because the, the stuff that you may be spending on the industrial side now would be coming through here. Needing more water available for the residents? Or? It could be, or... And I didn't even, I even proposed the question of, well, can we take the water off the goose as our water source instead of pulling it off? And they said, yes, you could. This was designed more for what the major use of the project is Grand Forks, Fargo, and other communities that use that river water for their drinking water and usage. So that's where most of it's, it's for the dry years, and they want to make sure that they have water production and able to filter and water treatment. That doesn't mean that once the pipe is open running, it's always going to be running. They have to make sure operational. If we had a plant that came in and said, we want to use one cubic foot of water, and, but we're maxed out on our wells, which we're close to, if I remember right, then we have another source of water that we can use. Because every time that you add another plant in or different things, um, it is a huge cost or a huge potential of water. I was trying, let me see if I can find that. If you have other questions, you can ask what I'm trying to. And 
this business ever end then, or? No. 78, I think. Is that the year? They, it's a 30 year note. So it is dropping in at Cooperstown. So either we get the water from Cooperstown or from the red. They're showing that our aquifers that we're around here are close to being uh, used up. And then so for example, if we wanted to get a potato french fry company coming in, they require 3.08 cubic feet per minute of water production to run that factory. Corn syrup plant, 2.89. Paper packaging, 2.06. Malting barley, 1.74. Oil seed or dehydrated potato flakes is 0.3. A pasta plant is 0.08. A beef processing, a small processing plant is 0.73. Malting barley is five, and a nitrogen fertilizer production is 12.22 cubic feet per minute. Wow. So, if you wanted, and if I think it's an economical thing, is probably what they looked at is what water potential would be there if we could get one of these facilities to come. I did reach out to Trail County and asked him if there was anything on the radar that they even looked at, um, and he was going to check into it to see what the potential we would need. This is a, uh, we have to lock it in now, and once we lock it in, we're not getting, we could potentially buy it from somebody else that also has it, but say if Mayville bought in and they're not going to use theirs, we could maybe buy their What are they going to need now, you said? June, I think. June, probably. So now is your time to figure out all the questions and we can... Um, they did say if they wanted, you know, to come talk to the commission or any of those things, they would be willing. So. That would be this group on top here. Yeah, that's just people that we're talking about. Uh, Red River oh, Valley Water Supply Project. But their their engineer was from AE2S, wasn't he? Um. Yes, the Steve Bruin is from E2S. Mm -hmm. yes. I would be interested in hearing from somebody to, to maybe explain what the other people prior to us knew. Okay, I'll see if I, what I can do. Why only Mayville and Hillsboro? It's not just Mayville and Hillsboro. Oh. That's okay. just who was at the meeting. Oh. That's just our region. Okay. It is... Um, Langdon, Devil's Lake, Carrington, Wapaton, Southeast Region Water, Gwinner, Southwest Region Water, Stutzman Water, Fargo, West Fargo, Cass Water, Grand Forks Trail Water, Trail uh, Agassiz Water Users, Walsh, East Central, North Regional Water District, Grafton, Laramore. So there's a lot of people that have bought it. This is a billion dollar project. The ones that you just listed did buy in, you said? They bought in. The, everybody is at that same stage right now. The two biggest users, which is Grand Forks and Fargo, have, are bought in and in it. I think the rest have bought in for a portion like we would. Say it's 0.5 cubic feet, or it could be 10, whatever they. So pray for rain. <laughs> Unfortunately, you know, there's going to be a dry year some year, so. It's going to happen. 
Okay. Um, the one thing I forgot to bring up, and I will continue to talk about it now with the public works laborers, is I did have an individual ask about if we would be willing to wait, because um, they are in their current position, possibly could start November, maybe December, and that'd be that for that last position we just opened up. I said I could ask. There was no guarantees, but I knew that we were looking. So, what was the question? If they could apply, if you'd consider waiting and for them until November. I had said that, you know, we'd have to see what applicants we get and kind of go from there. So. The seasonal public works employees, we do have a couple applications, but um, the one comment from before is what we had I'd said that we should look at maybe raising. We didn't make a decision on that. But the one is coming back, and it sounded... Like from what the guys were telling me, is that that person is probably going to do a lot of training because this will probably be their last year. So if we can help out in any way to make sure. Where are they? Excuse me. What are they currently at? Sixteen. It might be. Um. I think that's what it is. If I had Tyler Tech, I could tell you pretty quick. <laughs> I could go look over there if you, if you guys want me to, but it's... It's either 16 or 1650. It's not any more than 1650. I'm pretty sure it's 16. Yeah, the lifeguards start at 15, and some of them were at 16. Um, I remember those ones, but yeah, public works they struggle with. There's a lot more overturn on those, I feel, so... They just had a hard time getting people, so they had to. Right, we had the ones to, that they did have. Nobody was applying, so they had to. Right. Yeah. The other extreme. Here we can't get them to apply down here. We got a bunch of them. Right. <laughs> well, I don't know that we have a bunch of them. We just have. We have two, and we Sometimes have Sometimes two seems like a bunch. I guess. Well, we haven't advertised our day yet, so <laughs> what, a week or two away we have advertised. Yeah. How many years is this? That's a bunch compared to where This individual come back. I didn't realize that hadn't been posted. <laughs> Four. This will be a well, short I think they're short there a little bit. On We're talking about $2. Are you talking $2 an hour? Well, I think we should put it where it's competitive, what we move the pool people up to because they'd be up to they were at 16 last year they're going to be at 17 possibly 1750 I can't remember exactly where they're all at so. do you want me to run over and just look yeah, I it's going to find it. okay I'll let you find it <laughs> well I know what the, I know at the county if you come back in the summertime you get the same percentage of raise that the full time guys get if you keep returning. Sarah thinks it's 17, but it might be 16 and a half, is what she just said. Yeah, I thought it was. And there's potentially only two that would come back. One I don't think is going to be.
Well, I would say 18 would, would be, then you're close to what the pool employee returns would be. The new guys are only 16. We haven't said that. That's what he said. In the, well, that's just what he was getting. That's what he was getting me. I think we start them at 15, if I remember right. I think so. All right. And I know they said that they work really hard. Or the ones that they've had have been, the two they had worked really hard. And I hope they'd come back every year. They typically get a, a certain dollar per piece. Previously, we gave 50 cents. Yep. But we, like I said, we raised pool up to try to catch up. Well, that. So how it worked before was public works guys were making more than the pool employees. Well, we couldn't find pool employees. Well, then we raised the pool employees, and now public works is making less than the pool. So, Well, they can still be a lifeguard if they want. <laughs> <laughs> you can do a two-for-hour. Do a two-for-hour. Yeah. Take the summer off and be a lifeguard. <laughs> and they, they do come out and help in the pool. So, so these two are both returned? One for sure, just, just one just for one. sure yep. that I know of. Well, I don't have any problem bumping him up because if he's been coming back for four years, that's he's, it's well worth it to bump him up. Is that a motion to move them to 18? Yeah, I'll make a motion. For these returning, do they, do they every year they get bumped up, do they make more than their full time staff? And generally, they don't get much overtime. It's pretty much. No, like I think sometimes when it's rain, they send them home too. And there's nothing going on. Is there a second? These two over here took forever. I'm going under the bus tonight. I was tying those two back there. Yeah, you, you got to wait to hear our reports. Hey, would you bump? Go away, you bump. My slippers are so comfortable. Would you cover your pajamas? You cover your pajamas, you know where it's coming from. Second. Second? Okay. Dies for lack of second. Anything else for the good of the order? Well, I would. You said his current wage is 16 15 you said? Correct. Well, I'd make a motion to go 17 You said 18 right? Well, he goes up 17 yeah. already. Oh, it does? Okay. Well, then we won't worry about it. I'll second Paul's motion. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a motion. <laughs> Can you get a second where you want? Yeah, I know. We're here all. Now they're giving them away. <laughs> no. Anything else for the good of the order? Anything from the two reports? I just have a couple of these guys. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion. Second? Second. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>